Hey, hey, I'm Zombie Johnny, and welcome back to the third episode of my comic book and manga review series. In this episode, I will be taking a look at a comic book. It's an epic tale that, in my opinion, could trump the Lord of the Rings series. This is the fantasy tale called Bone. Bone is written and illustrated by Jeff Smith and published by Cartoon Books, which is Jeff Smith's publishing company. The story begins with the introduction of the three main characters, the Bone Boys. We have Phone Bone, who is our protagonist and the most level-headed of the Bone family. Alongside Phone Bone is Funicipal P Bone, who is the despicable, scheming cousin whose only purpose is to earn as much currency as possible. And lastly, we have Smiley Bone, the jolly and somewhat slow other cousin. The Bone Boys find themselves banished from their homeland of Boneville and are now traipsing through the desert to get away from the angry mob that follows. You see, Phony was trying to execute one of his famous schemes and ended up upsetting the whole of Boneville, which ended up in him being chased out of town, dragging Bone and Smiley along with him. Shortly thereafter, Phone Bone, also known simply as Bone, gets separated from Phony and Smiley and is now on his own in a strange land. During his journey through this new land, he meets a dragon that smokes cigarettes and a small leaf bug named Ted. After a short time, Bone bumps into some monsters called rat creatures. These two rat creatures in particular are common characters throughout the entire adventure. The rat creatures, which are an army of talking quadruped giant rats, end up being the antagonist alongside the hooded one in this story. Bone has to endure a winter alone in this new place, but he suddenly comes across a young woman named Thorn gathering water in a river. You are introduced to a few new characters shortly thereafter. Thorn's grandmother, Grandma Ben, and Lucius Down, the owner of the Barrelhaven Tavern. This is where the true adventure of the Bone Boys begins. One of the first things that you'll notice is that the character expressions are executed very well. There is such emotion in their faces. There is a Disney-esque quality to the characters. You can really see the emotions in the lines of the panels. They're drawn so beautifully. There is some amazing use of blacks too, framing panels in black to make some of the scenes really pop. It has such atmosphere, you can almost smell the wood smoke coming out of the pages sometimes. The backgrounds are really gorgeous. There is tons of detail in the characters and backgrounds that just make it stand out from so many other comics. Maybe it's aimed for younger readers, but it's still really beautifully done and the story is actually kick-ass. As the story goes on, it gets heavier and heavier. It starts off as a whimsical fantasy story, but quickly develops into a serious human bone thing, rat creature drama. It starts getting deep. The people in the comic start feeling dread and you start feeling it along with them. I actually got so wrapped up in this comic book that I completely forgot to write down notes. So books one through four are really just setting the groundwork for the rest of the story. They have their own small adventures within the first four books, but it's really leading up to the big epic adventure. After book six, I feel is where you find the story takes a left turn. You find out why the Hooded One is after the Bone Boys, and why they're creating the Rat Creature Army. Book 6 has a lot of action, comedy, and character development. As it concludes, it ends on an interesting cliffhanger. And Book 7 opens on a very sad note. The whole of Book 7 is very somber, very desolate. There is a lot of story crammed into it. That, and a lot of walking. To be honest, it's the only time in the series where I felt like it was padding. In Book 8, things pick up a little bit, and you meet a new character named Lord Tarsal. Now Lord Tarsal lost his arm fighting dragons. If you look closely, you can see that Lord Tarsal has long fingernails on his remaining hand. Just from this, you can tell that Lord Tarsal is too proud to ask any one of his soldiers to cut his fingernails, and he cannot do it himself, so he leaves them to grow. This is why this comic is brilliant. There is such attention to detail. Book 9 is absolutely amazing. It has a great balance of story arc and action. Being able to explain some of the major plot points while keeping the story moving is almost refreshing after Book 7. The characters go through absolute hell in the final book. There are major battles, gigantic evils unleashed, amazing powers realized, all amongst a massive bloody war. I feel like Bone grew up with its audience. As the reader grew older, the story grew deeper and darker. Thorn becomes a complete and total badass, kicking the shit out of whatever comes her way. And Grandma Ben is my absolute favorite character. She doesn't have the nickname Cowwoman for no reason. The Bone Boys strap in for a huge ride in the final chapters of this story. It seems every character you have met along this adventure is involved in the final arc and has to prove themselves on the battleground. There are some major losses during these final few pages, but in the end, the day is won. The Bone Boys get trapped in the Barrelhaven Grandma Ben cabin area for another winter before they say their final goodbyes and find their way home. Even though I am saying the Bone Boys find their way home, 
You have no idea what takes place until that point. I cannot, with all my being, spoil this story for you. You're going to have to read this one on your own, and you will not regret it. There are only a couple things I have issues with, but they are very minor. The page weight of this comic book is pretty light, so sometimes the panels on the opposite page bleed through, and it's a little distracting. But in the end, I found myself so wrapped up in the story, it was hardly noticeable. There are a few panels where Thorne's face is hard to read or expression. I can tell that Jeff Smith was going for some sort of wincing face, but it just turns into a great impression of the Joker. The only other thing is that sometimes the Bone Boys feel a little out of place. There's such detail in some of the characters, and the Bone Boys are just simple white characters that stand out like a sore thumb. But I guess that's kind of the point of the whole story, isn't it? Having these characters stand out in a world that isn't their own makes it even more evident that they don't belong here, and the whole story centers around them getting home. Doing a little research on Bone, I found out that the initial release was in 1995. This comic is over 20 years old. It definitely doesn't feel like it's 20 years old. The final book was published in 2004, so it took almost 10 years to complete this comic. Apparently Jeff Smith drew the final page before he started the first page of the first book. Now that the movie has been announced, well, some time ago, it's a perfect time to gaze upon the glory that is Bone. It is a wonderfully colorful world, even though my copy is in black and white. And my copy of Bone is, is well loved, simply because I love this comic. I highly suggest that you pick this one up. There are a few different versions that you can actually pick up. There is a full color all-in-one version, and I'm pretty sure it costs a pretty penny. The version that I read was the all-in-one edition that is easily accessible. There are some minor differences between the versions. Some pages and panels have been corrected from the original source material. I'm not exactly sure what these changes were, but the all-in-one version seems to be the finalized story. There are also full color books that you can pick up as well. I only have one book, but you can tell there was a lot of care put into these books. But I truly enjoy reading the black and white versions more. I feel like it really allows you to use your imagination. Total pages, 1,332. Total volumes, 9. Total score, 5 out of 5. This comic is definitely a must-own comic. Cheers, and thank you so much for coming and watching this video. I've had such a great time doing these videos, and it's been really a great learning experience. And the reception has been really good as well. This is just like such a positive experience throughout the whole thing. I have three more planned. One of the reviews is written, and it's also a Canadian comic, and I'm going to let you try and guess which one it is. It's in the manga style, so it has a digest style comic. I'll let you try and guess which one it is. The other two are quite up in the air. I'm not exactly sure what I have planned, but I'm very excited for them as well. Whatever they end up being, I'm sure it's going to be a good time. I'm being very positive about this because I'm enjoying it myself. Thank you so much once again. Cheers and peace. Here we go. Take five. <laughs> Okay. I can hear you out there, Max. What are you doing? Hi. What? I I can't help you. I can't help you. Why don't you go climb up there? Hey, shush. Come on. Hey, whoa. Take it easy. Up here. Okay. Just relax. Hey.